The navigation system on board a modern commercial airliner is a bit of a complex yet interesting subject as it allows aircraft to navigate with pinpoint accuracy. If you've ever wondered about the sort of systems that make it possible for an aircraft to navigate thousands of miles without any outside references, then stay tuned because this is exactly what we will be exploring in today's video. Welcome back. Modern planes incorporate various systems to help an aircraft navigate. As technology has advanced, aircraft navigation systems have evolved considerably over the decades. And the systems on today's modern airliners are highly sophisticated and deliver a great degree of accuracy and reliability. We will be looking at three systems that are commonly used on airliners whilst exploring their basic working principle. As always, every effort will be made to keep the content light and easy to follow. Three systems that typically feature in a modern plane's navigation makeup are one, the initial reference system or the IRS, two, our ground-based radio aids, which include systems such as VORs, DMEs, NDBs, RLSs, etc. We won't actually get into how each of these systems works, but we will briefly talk about the role they play in the context of aircraft navigation. And three, we will also examine how the Global Positioning System, or GPS, fits into an aircraft's navigation system and its growing significance when considering the future of navigation. Let's delve into each one of them. The first we have is the Inertial Reference System, or IRS. Older versions were referred to as the Inertial Navigation System. The IRS has been in use for a very long time. In fact, it is one of the oldest navigation systems that was first developed in the 1940s and is still in wide use today by modern commercial airliners. The IRS is a self-contained onboard system that can track the aircraft position without any external references. In other words, it is not dependent on any external aids when it comes to determining an aircraft's uh, position. An RS uses a combination of something called accelerometers and gyroscopes. These components in an RS calculate any movement and acceleration of the aircraft across any of its three axes. Now to quickly explain what we mean by the axis, Think of them as imaginary lines around which an aircraft can turn. So there are three. We have the longitudinal axis that runs along the fuselage of the plane. An aircraft rolls around the longitudinal axis. We then have the lateral axis that runs from wingtip to wingtip. The aircraft pitches around the lateral axis. And lastly, we have the vertical axis, which is a line that runs along the center of the aircraft and an aircraft yaws around the vertical axis. At the start of the flight, whilst on the ground with the pilots setting up the aircraft um, up ready for flight, the RSS carry out an alignment that establish the aircraft's exact position. An RS usually requires an initialization process that establishes the relationship between the aircraft frame, so the reference axis, and the geographical reference. In other words, the position and orientation of the plane. Now this process is called alignment. And alignment usually requires the aircraft to remain stationary for a period of time in order to initialize fully. Traditionally, pilots would need to enter the longitude and the latitude in the RS whilst it is aligning. But as technology has improved, this is usually not a requirement uh, on modern planes where the RSS carry out the alignment almost autonomously. They require no external input other than telling them where the aircraft is at the start of the flight. RSS aren't as accurate as the GPS and their position error increases over time, but they still allow the aircraft to navigate to a reasonably uh, good level of accuracy should all other navigation references be lost. Hence they constitute an important part of an aircraft's navigation system. Next, let's understand the role ground-based radio aids play in an aircraft's navigation system. 
Radio beacons, normally located on land, send out radio beams that tell pilots the aircraft's range and direction from that radio aid. Now this allows the aircraft's computer systems to calculate the aircraft's location. The more radio signals that can be detected, the more accurate the estimated position is. Now we won't get into the specifics of how these radio aids work, but just to name a few, uh, these include something called VOR, so very high frequency omnidirectional radio range with associated DME, or distance measuring equipment. Others include NDBs or non-directional beacon. Um, that's a much older system. One of the most important systems when we talk about navigation on a modern plane is its ability to use GPS. GPS is something that's extensively used by us in our day-to-day -day lives. The Global Positioning System project was commenced by the United States Department of Defense in the 1970s and it is one of the primary navigation sources on a modern plane. An aircraft continuously attempts to monitor its GPS position and it is also typically the most accurate navigation system on most modern commercial aircraft. In fact, in some circumstances, it allows the aircraft to perform maneuvers down to an accuracy of 0.1 nautical mile. Now, to provide for the context, the GPS encompasses a constellation of 24 operational satellites that transmit radio signals to users, which also include the aircraft. There are actually 31 satellites, but there would be at least 24 satellites that are operational for at least 95% of the time. Now, here's a fun fact. GPS satellites fly at an average height of approximately 20,200 kilometers and have an orbital period of 12 hours. The spacing of the satellites is such that at any point an observer on or close to the surface of the Earth will have between five and eight satellites in view. Modern aircraft incorporate GPS receivers that receive signals from satellites. This information is then used by the wider navigation system on board, often in conjunction with other systems that we talked about earlier um, to help establish the aircraft's position. When it comes to position computation on a modern plane, this would commonly employ a mix of GPS and RS position uh, to compute something called a GPRS position, which is then used by the flight management system. For GPS to be usable by an aircraft's navigation system, there is a need for an aircraft to detect at least five satellites that make it possible for the system to determine the aircraft's precise geographical position whilst meeting the requirements of something called RAIM or Receiver Autonomous Integrity Monitoring. RAIM sounds complicated, but it is basically a means to detect errors in the data being provided by the satellites and to ensure that its integrity is maintained. Now, although GPS plays a central role in a modern plane's navigation system, it is susceptible to several limitations. First of all, there are GPS black spots where there may not be enough satellites in range to obtain a position. Clearly, this is not acceptable if operating at the aircraft with sole reference to GPS when uh, it's close to the ground. GPS is also subject to jamming or interruption due to a number of reasons, such as military conflicts, let's say. Now, should the aircraft GPS receivers fail or if the GPS system or satellites were to go offline, the aircraft has suitable redundancy in place to ensure that it can still navigate to an acceptable level of accuracy. Should all systems fail, and that would be highly unlikely, and even if it did occur, it would most likely be a temporary event, modern planes are equipped with a magnetic compass which forms part of the standby instrumentation. All right, so there we have it, an overview of the sort of systems that are on board a modern airliner that help it navigate with a high level of accuracy and reliability. As it can be seen, each system has its limitations, but as they all work in tandem, and given the level of redundancy, this ensures that aircraft see a high degree of accuracy and reliability in their navigation capabilities. You see, navigation systems have come a long way over the decades, and with planes today using GPS systems, 
quite extensively, it has paved the way for concepts such as area navigation or RNAV and required navigation performance or RNP. RNAV and RNP fall under the scope of something called performance-based navigation or PBN, which is quite a fascinating topic as it represents a shift from conventional sensor-based to performance-based navigation. PBN brings a variety of benefits to airlines, air traffic control and so on, such as more efficient design of airspace and procedures. So instead of a conventional navigation pattern that would see an aircraft fly from one ground-based navigation aid to another, concepts such as RNAV and RNP make it possible for a plane to fly a more direct route. Now this provides for a more efficient design of airspace and procedures which collectively result in improved safety, aerospace capacity, operational efficiency and environmental impact. Well, I hope that made some sense and it wasn't too difficult to follow. As always, if you have any questions or comments or you would like a certain topic related to aviation of flying covered, please put that in the comments below and I shall do my best to cover that in a future video. If you like the video, please give it a thumbs up and share it along. Well, thanks very much for your time and support and I look forward to seeing you in the next one again very soon. Thanks very much again and I wish you a great day.